In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can reference an object in a collection based on its position within that collection using its index number. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and then if necessary, click the Enable Content button to allow any existing code to run. This is the same file we've worked on in the previous two parts of this lesson. So let's head straight to the Developer tab and open the Visual Basic Editor and have a look at the code we've already written. In the previous part of this lesson, we looked at how to reference an object in a collection using its name. Let's say, for example, I wanted to reference the NFC 2017 worksheet in order to apply the select method to it. I could do that by referring to the worksheets collection first of all, and then in some parentheses and double quotes, refer to the name of the object, NFC 2017, close the parentheses and double quotes, and then apply the select method to it. This technique is fine and works great as long as you know the name of the object you're trying to reference, but that won't always be the case. An alternative way to reference an object is to use its index number. So every object in a collection is provided with a number which indicates its position. The way the position of an object works depends upon the collection, but for a worksheets collection, the position and the number is based on the order of the worksheets from left to right. So currently the NFL 2017 worksheet is the first worksheet, then AFC 2017 is worksheet number two, and NFC 2017 is worksheet number three. If I switch back to the VB editor, an alternative way to reference the NFC 2017 worksheet, therefore, is to simply use the number three, which indicates its position. If I rearrange the screen so that we can see both the Excel window and the VB editor window in the same screen, let's select one that is not the NFC 2017 worksheet. And then if I use the F8 key to step through this procedure, we should see that the third worksheet in the collection, which happens to be NFC 2017, is the one that's selected. It's worthwhile just briefly pointing out the difference between the worksheets and the sheets collections. If I just change the width of the screen so we can see all the sheets in this workbook, there are five altogether. So the worksheets collection refers only to the objects which have this row and column structure. So that's these three sheets. It doesn't include the chart sheet. If I change the way this code works to reference the sheets collection, so let's say sheets three dot select, this time this will include the chart sheets. So when I run this subroutine now, this time I'll have the chart sheet selected. The charts collection as well behaves slightly differently. The charts collection contains only the chart sheets. So there are only two of them. The first one is again, the one on the left. The second one, the one on the right. So these are indexed in the, in the same order from left to right. So if I alter this to say charts, I can't say three because there isn't a third chart. So I can say charts two, for example. And if I step through the procedure, this will then select the second chart, which is the NFC chart. Now, while referencing an object based on its position within a collection doesn't seem immediately useful, there are some situations where it comes in very handy indeed. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to arrange the sheets in this workbook. First of all, let's say that I wanted to move all of the charts to sit to the left of whichever is currently the first worksheet. So basically all the charts will appear to the left of the sheets and all the worksheets will appear to the right. Let's create a new subroutine in the existing module called Arrange Sheets. What I can then do is say this workbook.activate to make sure I'm in the correct workbook when this takes place. And then I can refer to the charts collection and then apply the move method to it. The first parameter of the move method for the charts collection is before. So I'm going to say before, and then I need to reference a single other sheet in the workbook. So in this case, I'm going to reference whichever happens to be the first object in the worksheets collection. So I can do this by saying worksheets one. Alternatively, I could just say sheets one. So that will move all the charts to sit before any sheet. Let's do it that way. Let's say sheets one. If I then use the F8 key to step through while we can see Excel in the background, we should see that both charts now are moved to sit to the left of all of the existing other sheets. Now let's say we wanted to do the opposite. We want to move all of the charts to sit to the right of any existing sheet. We can do this by passing a value to the after parameter rather than the before parameter of the move method. Currently, there are five sheets altogether in the workbook. So if I did specify that this was 
moved after sheets five, that would indeed move all of the charts to sit to the right of all the other sheets. However, I don't know how many sheets this workbook is likely to contain at any given point. So rather than hard coding this number five, I can establish the number of sheets in a collection by applying the count property to it. So I want to say sheets and then in parentheses sheets dot count. Let me just rearrange the screen so we can see things a little more clearly. There we go. So when this expression is evaluated, we work out how many sheets are currently in the workbook. Uh, it provides a count of five in the first time I run it. And then it moves all of the charts to sit after that fifth one. So using the F8 key to step through, we should indeed find that now all of the charts sit to the right of any other sheets in the workbook. The same rules apply to referencing objects contained within collections embedded within other objects. So for example, anything embedded within a worksheet like a list objects collection or a chart objects collection. Let's add another subroutine to the same module called refer to embedded object. Let's add an instruction that makes sure that we have the AFC 2017 worksheet selected first. I'll do this by name as I know that it's called AFC 2017 in this case, rather than its position. So AFC 2017.select. What I'd then like to do is reference the second list object in the list objects collection. I'm going to use a variable to do that as we did in the previous part of this lesson. So I'm going to say dim t as list object. I can then set a reference in that variable. I can say set t equals active sheet dot list objects. And again, the list objects collection is indexed based on the order in which the lists appear in the worksheet. So this happens to be the second one. This, uh, the one that I want to reference is, is index number is two. So I can reference that as the number two and then try to apply some kind of method or property to it. Let's say t dot table style, something nice and obvious visually to see happening. So I can say set the table style equal to table style dark two. I'll go for this time. Beg pardon, I don't need that parenthesis there. Excuse me. So if I use the F8 key to continue stepping through this procedure now, I'll see that I have this second table highlighted in a different color. 